I am African American, an American descendant of slaves. By that, I mean that my four parents did not arrive to the United States on a flight by Delta, American Airlines, or United. My, <laughs> my friend would say they, they came cramped under the bowels of a ship. For over 250 years, my ancestors were beaten, maimed, hung, raped, and forced to work without compensation. When they sought to read and write, they were beaten and sometimes even killed by white people. It only became legal for blacks to read in most states after the Civil War, which was after 1865. And even then, due to Jim Crow laws, black people did not have equitable access to high quality educational materials as their white counterparts. And in the 1920s and 30s, so many lynchings of black men uh, were taking place. One civil rights group, the NAACP, hung a flag outside its headquarters that read, a man was lynched yesterday. It was only until 1955 that through the Brown versus Board of Education case that was settled at the Supreme Court that the government forced white schools to desegregate. And it was another 10 years after that, that black people were allowed to vote. So within that context, education is not just an opportunity for social mobility. It is a right that my four parents fought and died for. It is within that context that I think about education in general. I believe the privilege to be educated and to educate is a sacred trust similar to those who engage in, in the religious vocations. I come from a cultural tradition that honors and reverences education. Lastly, it was only three months ago that prominent businessman Greg Tremontan posted online that Vice President Harris was a quote, ho. So it often makes me wonder if behind the passive aggressive refusal of students and even staff members who refuse to acknowledge black faculty professional titles in an academic setting that they consciously or even subconsciously think, why does this N word think he or she should be called doctor? Uh, there was an article uh, by Dr. Allison Miller titled that op-ed about Jill Biden was sexist, but the real problem lies deeper. And, and the quote is that really resonated with me was, where I have encountered most disrespect for my doctorate is actually from academics. Let me say that again. Where I have encountered the most disrespect for my doctorate is actually from academics. One reason the response to Epstein's uh, demand for deference from Jill Biden when he said kiddo was so intense is that as an external observer, he is a safe target. It is in fact uh, not safe for women and people of color to respond in kind to those who have soft power over them and their careers in academe, end quote. What I take Miller to be saying is that the challenges are not just from how students relate to us, but how do our senior colleagues treat us? Those who are tenured, full professor, white, and often male. But I will also say we need to start the conversation with the complicity of white women in accepting white male patriarchal norms. What I mean by that is women of color such as Dr. Barry and Dr. Garcia on this panel have written groundbreaking essays on the topic of the lack of respect for women and people of color and their academic titles. And black male scholars such as Dr. Tyron Douglas and I have discussed the dismissive ways in which white people disregard our academic standing at all levels. But it was only until a white woman was perceived to be slighted that many white women were up in arms. So it was within a particular context that they showed care about these slights. Uh, Dr. Dr. Ty Douglas made this cogent point and then, and then I'll, I'll yield, the full, yield the floor. He said, it is not uncommon for white administrators, white faculty members uh, to build their professional reputations on being 
quote, good mentors or advisors to black students, people of color, and on occasion, black junior faculty when it is politically expedient, but take a moment to reflect on what track record has been regard what your track record has been regarding advocating for your black contemporaries, peers, uh, the advancement of black and the advancement of black colleagues. Consider other intersectional identities uh, and their nuances like gender and sexuality. And for example, your engagement with black women and black men. Uh, so one of the things that we got to step up. Um, so a part of this, um, I was already doing some of this, but my wife is also a faculty member here on campus. Uh, and so um, there, there are things that are brought to my attention um, uh, because she's both, you know, she's a black woman that she experiences, uh, uh, particularly when she's when she started and was starting to teach here. And so uh, there are times, there are times where when we're together, people will address me, right? But don't necessarily address her. And so I have to ship, but I'm conscious of that, right? Uh, so I think that the men that are, that the male professors that are uh, on this call are, you don't even have to be a professor. You can be a student. Um, I'm hoping that this is, you're hearing, you're hearing uh, the voices of women saying that this is, this is not right. This is something uh, that should not happen. And so if you're a male student and you see that um, the way that your female professors are being addressed is incorrect, uh, I think you should, you should step up and say something. And for our, you know, our, our male administrators, those I'm talking about, those that are empowered, uh, empowered, those that are full professors and all that, uh, they need to be, they need to be really thinking about some of these, uh, some of these things, because they play out and settle nuances, but they really um, impact, impact people of color and women in uh, negative ways. Uh, I'll share a direct quote uh, from my article with, with Dr. Ty Douglas, put some respect on my name, navigating the use of academic titles and personas. And it comes from page 21 and 22. Uh, quote, when a white faculty member or administrator advocates for the need to have a flat organizational structure and promotes informality within a higher education setting, I, Sidney Freeman Jr., equate it to the similar liberal notions of being a good person versus being anti-racist. It doesn't cost a white faculty member or administrator much to choose not to be called by their title as their privilege is inscribed on their person, given the deference and advantages afforded them by being white. Brown coined this term of, of action as a form of polite white supremacy, where white people are nice and can advocate for seemingly equitable treatment for all, but all the while maintaining comfort through not having to make hard professional or personal changes, maintaining control over organizational decision-making and through confidentiality, not acknowledging problematic power dynamics that disproportionately negatively impacts people of color. So not utilizing a person's title doesn't cost white people very much since they, since they are not being expected to do the introspective work of challenging their own unearned positionality, influence, and, pr and privilege, end quote. At our major conference in, in education, we have a, a black, a black, um, we call it SIGs, so our, our smaller groups, and we have blacks in, in education. And so in that group, uh, it's it's full of uh, what you call those racial uh, macro affirmations. And so we have people stand up. Uh, if you got tenure, stand up. Dr. Freeman, we're so proud of you. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you some insight into what it may look like in, in that kind of space. So I, I'm coming from oh, one thing that I didn't mention. Uh, that is kind of just different just culturally for me coming from Alabama to here. I, I was working at Tuskegee University for around four years. I even had a parking, I had a 
a uh, a parking space and on on the uh, name plate in, in front of my parking space, it said Dr. S. Freeman. So 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 imagine colleagues that are here uh, coming from a space where my 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 supervisor wouldn't call me Sydney. I was Dr. Freeman. Um, my my license plate. I mean, not my license plate, but my name plate when I went to drive in was Dr. Freeman. And then we we're in a, a a different culture that does not necessarily uh, do it the same way. So just understanding that that there's nuances uh, culturally uh, in different places.